Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Hongfei Kao from uh, KPMG. I'm a uh, you know, cloud engineer, director, uh, co-presenter with uh, Kevin Martelli. He's a uh, uh, you know, principal um, uh, in the you know, cloud uh, you know, industry area. Um, so our topic is um, uh, how we leverage OpenShift uh, uh, data storage uh, to deploy our uh, you know, Ignite machine learning uh, platform. Um, yeah, so I think as, as Hongfei was alluding to, you know, as part of this uh, database session that we're having here at, Com uh, at Commons, we plan on showing um, our KPMG Ignite platform. The KPMG Ignite platform is our data science, AI, and ML platform used for business, but it takes advantages of a lot of these technologies. So we want to show you in the context of a use case on how we leverage it through high throughput and also large data volumes of, of storing data. Um, and that will kind of go into the, the next two agenda items here. And then finally, you know, if we do have time, we thought it was interesting with some of the more, um, I would say, robust models that we were storing. Uh, it required some object storage or using PVCs uh, with a min IO layer on top of it. Not exactly database, but a data, st a data storage type of platform and application. We thought it'd be interesting to share as well. Um, if you go down one slide, Ankhfei. Um, as I was mentioning, just so we could set the background on what KPMG Ignite is. So, so KPMG, many years ago, um, we built what we call our data science, um, AI, and ML platform uh, powered on top of OpenShift. It's a platform that's built in a very modular way um, to allow the usages of best pieces of matter, whether open source software, proprietary software, or commercial software that can kind of plug in in order to build your use case or application. Initially, it was built for data scientists and engineers. Um, however, there's a hook there in for the business to be able to engage with and interact with the data sets that are coming out as well as to, to keep that human in a loop through the end-to-end -end process. And finally, it, it was built you know, mainly around unlocking the value of unstructured data. It, it since has, emer has changed to do um, structured data as well as semi-structured data, but really built off of all the, the rich text that needed to be taken out of these unstructured documents. And what I just wanted to quickly show here before we dive into the details is how a use case and methodology is built, which aligns to some of the ways that we're using different database technologies. So a use case is, is, is put together by a component. A component can be an, like something open source, like an OCR engine. A component can be classification, data extraction. So there's many components that get strung together into a workflow to produce an output. And as these components are you know, communicating back and forth, Kafka is the, the messaging channel, if you will, that allows these components to talk back and forth. And then there's interfaces in that human inner loop so users can see the output and help to retrain and re-update the models. I have you down one slide, Hong Feng. And then finally, this is the last slide before we, we drive into the content. If we think about Ignite, we think about it as a, a layered cake, if you want. There's sort of all the way to the top in the user experience part of it. There's interfaces and annotation UIs and management consoles of how people can interact with the data coming out of the platform. We have what we call in that middle layer, the Ignite AI platform. That, that These are kind of like the AI tooling that enables you to build and execute pipelines. As I was mentioning earlier, things that could be um, proprietary that KPMG has built, where we call it, you know, custom type of capabilities, things that may be open sourced in the market, like Ignite Tesseract, um, or things that we've kind of built as part of our overall, like, drivers of certain types of, you know, more tactical data extractions in which we call our intelligent domain engine. And if you look to the left, it talks a lot about some of the core fundamental um, things about the platform. So Loom is a way that we store data. So there's a consistency of where you put something into a particular um, you know, component and how something com comes out of that component. And then finally, you know, as one would expect, we have the, the, the orchestration layer, which is really powered by OpenShift, and we have some workflow engines in there. But I wanted to highlight this core infrastructure. So the core infrastructure is where we're going to focus most of our talk on today. And these are around the different, I would say, database-like applications that we're using. So we're using Kafka. We're using Postgres. You know, we're also using uh, MinIO, as we talked about. And then we are also using um, Elasticsearch, but we won't go into that for timing. Um, but we'll go through the types, the ways that we're using, um, you know, Kafka, how Kafka is set up in the platform, pros and cons. And then we'll also talk through, um, you know, how Postgres is being used as well. All right, with that, let me turn it over to Hong Fei Kao. All right, thank you, Kevin, uh, for the rest of the presentation. Uh, let me introduce you uh, how we uh, set up and leverage uh, OpenShift uh, data store to deploy the database for Ignite uh, platform. 
um, and also share some of the you know, lessons learned, uh, best practice, and what's the benefit uh, deployed on, on top of OpenShift. Uh, so the first component I'm going to introduce uh, to you is uh, Kafka. So we leverage uh, Kafka for the you know, message broker to stream uh, our uh, Ignite workflow, uh, metadata, or you know, some of the you know, uh, you know, job um, you know, uh, result uh, you know, to the multiple uh, worker container. Uh, for uh, to simplify, uh, the, here is uh, a three-node uh, Kafka clusters uh, with high availability setup, and each uh, you know worker uh, or you know worker container pod uh, will have a multiple uh, persistent volume claim amount to it. Uh, here we have uh, customized uh, uh, storage class for the uh, persistent volume, uh, which uh, using the encrypted uh, OpenShift container uh, storage OCS. Um, so uh, the story setup uh, here, right, is mainly for uh, distribute the uh, Kafka uh, message, uh, you know, data. Uh, also, um, our current version uh, Kafka requires the Zookeeper to store the cluster information. Um, so we also set up the high availability Zookeeper cluster. Um, I, I, you know, as a uh, one simple example, we have a three Zookeeper uh, nodes, right, as a minimum uh, a quorum cluster, and each uh, Zookeeper sim uh, node, right, similar to Kafka. It has a multiple uh, process volume uh, class amount to it. Um, so we found um, when deployed uh, Kafka and Zookeeper on top of OpenShift uh, versus uh, uh, other like a traditional VM or you know as uh, uh, type of deployment on cloud, uh, the benefit uh, using OpenShift, uh, including um, you know uh, the below uh, aspect. Uh, first one is uh, um, as uh, you know Mike mentioned, right? So there's uh, a strong um, you know uh, advantage uh, to build the a hybrid cloud strategy, uh, cloud agnostic approach uh, using the OpenShift. Um, and um, out of the box, OpenShift uh, offered us the uh, default like, you know, the, uh, orchestration of, and also the failover uh, through the you know, stateful site deployment, through the you know, building replica uh, uh, set. Uh, also, um, the whole deployment uh, is using uh, you know, the automated uh, CICD workflow, uh, which, you know, um, Help us uh, significantly on the you know the Kafka uh, restore uh, you know rolling update uh, patching etc. Uh, last but not least, um, it, it, uh, through the OpenShift we can easily scale up and scale down. Um, you know the, our Kafka cluster or Zookeeper cluster based on the workflow uh, you know needed. Um, hey, I'm saying maybe just one thing I want to add on to this slide. I think one of the challenges that we did run into, and you know we had a kind of software around it. As we were mentioning before, we have the concepts of a component. So a component can be like OCR, a component can be a classification, a component could be some like heuristic rule that's getting information out of a document. And if you're you going across hundreds of thousands of documents, and then you're having you know thousands of instant of, of these of these components spinning up to operate on the documents, there's a lot of communication and trafficking going back and forth between Kafka saying one component's done, next component take it, next component's done. So all of that interchange between you know the, the the process of executing component one component two component three component four to produce some type of output you know had a lot of heavy throughput on how a kafka needed to be kind of deployed configured uh with on the platform to have the certain slas that needed to be in place and then also keep the resiliency of how the um the, the tooling needed to work so there was a couple of things that the, the, the team has worked through i think on Faye, you know talked through them uh, but that was a, initially a challenge with how many messages were going back and forth because of the spin up of the pods to execute those individual components for selected workloads? Yep. Thank you, Kevin. All right. Um, the next component uh, we're I'm going to talk about is uh, Postgres. Uh, so, we, uh, as a Unite platform, we use uh, uh, Postgres to store our uh, in that workflow metadata as a traditional uh, data store. Um, similar to Kafka, we also want to deploy Postgres as uh, a high availability uh, you know, cluster setup. And what we found out is uh, uh, OpenShift offers a Postgres operator uh, you know, through the vendor um, you know, the implementation. So it uh, significantly reduces uh, the complexity of deploying the high availability uh, Postgres uh, cluster. Uh, also, uh, we have you know, the building uh, some of the uh, solutions or customized uh, solutions for uh, backing up the Postgres data, uh, which leverage the, um, uh, the, uh, the object storage MIO as uh, 
uh, lending zone type of solution. Uh, we dump the Postgres data to uh, MIO, uh, and uh, once uh, the Postgres uh, uh, cluster restored or you know backup, uh, we can you know the, uh, share the, the data across you know the. Uh, to the different cluster, or you know, uh, you know, uh, backup restore the data to the new uh, Postgres cluster. Um, when we deploy the Postgres on OpenShift, we found uh, uh, you know below uh, advantage, right, benefits, uh, including the um, uh, the easy deployment through the uh, operator, uh, and it uh, has a, you know the very good integration with uh, storage uh, support. Uh, also, uh, the building uh, enterprise grade level high availability. Uh, you know, orchestration uh, fell over, uh, help uh, significantly on the database deployment. Uh, it also, uh, similar to Kafka, uh, it provides a cloud agnostic hybrid cloud approach uh, for the deployment um, and, uh, you know, easy migration. Uh, CSCD uh, integrated using uh, the existing uh, CSCD, uh, like Jenkins and the Bob or, you know, TikTok, so uh, it's going to reduce right, the deployment time. Uh, last but not least, uh, the building uh, security module to support the uh, policy and uh, hardening our uh, deployment. So a lot of um, uh, benefit for us right, to deploy the database Postgres on uh, OpenShift. Next, I'm going to quickly talk about uh, uh, another type of uh, you know storage uh, we directly leverage for Ignite uh, machine learning model. Um, different from Postgres Kafka, here we uh, directly leverage the standalone persistent volume claim. Uh, running on top of the OpenShift cluster storage. Um, like many uh, uh, other machine learning platform ecosystems, uh, Ignite also has a model database or model inventory to store the pre-trained model. Uh, and sometimes the model could be a very large scale uh, uh, if you know, the, it involves, uh, uh, for example, deep learning or you know, the natural language processing model. Uh, it could be like you know, the, even uh, uh, several gigabytes uh, size. Um, to speed up the model uh, you know, prediction or classification process, how, uh, when we serve the model, um, to uh, reduce uh, downloading the model from the database, model database or model inventory, we actually set up a centralized shared uh, read, write, many persistent uh, volume class uh, to store those uh, a large size object or uh, pre-trained model, and uh, later it will shared across uh, multiple uh, you know, machine learning worker container or pods. So this required, um, you know, minimum uh, data download time is only one time data load, uh, and it is significantly reduce the network traffic uh, between the model database and the OpenShift uh, cluster. Um, and the, given the model itself, uh, the nature of the model is relative static compared to the other uh, data we store in Kafka or Postgres, uh, we can do the separate deployment uh, loading the model uh, as, uh, as the beginning of the, uh, you know, the model serving job, uh, and it only required um, infrequent you know, data updates, which we have a separate uh, uh, deployment job for uh, the model updates. So here, uh, from the right-hand side, um, it shows uh, uh, before the deployment, we're going to mount the um, persistent volume, uh, rewrite uh, persistent volume claim to our deployment pod, and it will download the model from MLflow as our uh, model inventory. Uh, once the model is uh, uh, persisted there, uh, for any like model serving uh, pod or worker job, it can you know uh, load this, uh, the persistent volume claim as it read read many and uh, you know uh, reduce uh, the network traffic. Um, last but not least, I'm going to quickly touch uh, on the the object storage setup uh, inside Ignite. Um, so we also leverage the MIO as uh, our file system. Uh, on top of the OpenShift uh, uh, OCS uh, storage container. Um, here, uh, the MIO is uh, uh, deployed as uh, a stateful asset, and uh, each MIO uh, stateful asset has a multiple uh, you know, versus volume claim with a customized uh, storage class. Um, to, to benefit uh, the Ignite, the MIO is uh, support the uh, rewrite many uh, and has uh, the API uh, with the secured access key uh, to allow you know different uh, worker container to access the uh, mail data, uh, for example, we can store the uh, runtime log uh, or you know the job uh, input, uh, you know the documentation list, etc., uh, on top of the mail as our shared uh, object storage. Okay. Um, so, finally, uh, to conclude uh, our uh, Ignite deployment OpenShift work. 
uh, we found that uh, uh, leveraging OpenShift, especially the operator, is a key for our uh, you know, the enterprise level grade uh, you know, deployment uh, to handle the uh, Kafka, Postgres, um, you know, the machine learning uh, platform storage. Um, we found the OpenShift offer a lot of out-of-box um, you know, functionality to support high availability, failover, and um, uh, you know, CSD pipeline. Um, also, to have a better high availability support, uh, we um, prefer to deploy our platform uh, to multiple clusters in uh, different region and uh, uh, location data center. Uh, to enable the um, rerun many persistent volume claim is uh, the key to reduce our ne network traffic uh, for a large scale uh, machine learning pre-trained model like you know, deep learning bar model for NLP. Uh, and shared uh, across multiple uh, LP or model serving job. Um, also, uh, customized uh, uh, persistent volume claim backup uh, utility uh, is uh, also the key to help us uh, quickly, uh, you know, uh, rotate or you know update our existing database like a Postgres or Kafka. Last but not least, uh, um, you know, migrate from the old storage class to the OCS encrypted uh, storage class. Uh, give us uh, you know the uh, better you know throughput and uh, you know encryption uh, from the OpenShift uh, storage perspective.